Now, so let's briefly introduce some extensions of the CDL model. One extension is to go from the vanilla CDL to a marginalized version of CDL. But why do we need a marginalized version? Remember that in the CDL we actually have a very, very deep encoder. So this is like multiple, multiple layers of linear and nonlinear transformation in this encoder FE. And in this FR is actually both the encoder and decoder, so it's even more layer. And the idea of marginalized CDI is to marginalize all these, all these layers, all these multiple layers, and combine them into one, one, one single linear. Layer. So as you can see here, after the marginalization, we can actually replace this multi-layer operation with a single layer operation W1 here. So W1 is just a linear matrix. And as we can see, we're actually trying to represent this reconstruction operation using one single matrix. So this is this whole this whole matrix multiplication is actually taking this xx, x, x0, basically the input of the network, and try to reconstruct it the clean input using a single matrix W1. So correspondingly, the, the VJ here needs to be multiplied by a matrix P1 in order to go from the latent space to the content space. And, and here corresponds to the original reconstruction error. So in the original reconstruction error term, we have this clean content, right? This is the clean version of the document. Again, then this is the same as this, this, this one. And this reconstruction term corresponds to taking this x0 and multiply it by w1, which is the transformation matrix. And this is the marginalized version. So this whole thing is the marginalized version of the CDL. And one one good thing about this is, is that it actually saves a lot of computation during inference. Just because it, during inference, you only need to go through one, one single linear layer to, to get the representation. And another extension of CDL is to go from uh, predicting the rating to actually care about the ranking. Because usually in recommended systems, sometimes we care more about the order of the recommended list than the actual ratings, right? We only care about whether we can rank the actual positive item uh, at the top of the list. So corresponding, we can modify the CDL model from predicting rating to predicting whether one user will like the one item more than the other. For example, here, this, this last step is actually trying to predict whether this user, user I, is actually preferring uh, the item J over item K. And another extension of CDL is to go from the asymmetric formulation to the symmetric formulation. Remember in the previous vanilla version of CDL, we actually only have the deep learning model in the item side. But how about how about the user side, right? In in terms of user, we usually have a lot of user attributes like age, gender, occupation, country, city, etc. etc. And these are all very uh, valuable information to improve the recommendation systems performance. So one idea that this paper proposed is to have a autoencoder both on the user side and on the item side so that we can fully utilize the information about the user attributes. So the objective function of, of the symmetric CDL will be laid down in here. And this is, let's say that this is the the asymmetric version, where we only have the uh, one deep learning component for the item content. And in the symmetric version, we have another deep learning component for the user attributes. And the optimization process 
of learning the the parameter would be the same as before. And of course, we can have other extensions of CDR. For example, in the CDR, we're actually using using the back of words or using a sequence of, of, of words as input. And alternatively, we can actually use some continuous factor like word to back to represent the words. Or we can use the TFIDF of each word to, to represent the input. And remember that I know in, in the CDL, we actually learn these parameters using MAP. So basically we formulate it as a optimization problem with the regularization. Alternatively, we can resort to a fully Bayesian uh, treatment. So we can use either the sampling-based approach or the variation inference to actually learn the distributions of the parameters. And the nice thing about this is that we can actually have uncertainty estimate of how basically we can know how certain we are about our prediction and therefore the model will be much more accurate and robust. And the third extension is, for example, we can take into account some extra information about, for example, the tagging information about each, about each item or the network information about each item. For example, when we are when we are recommending articles to users, then naturally we can take into account the citation network among the articles to improve the recommendation accuracy. 